People can see love. Again, I didn't say you were perfect, but, but looking at a whole, you, you're a person who loves other people. That's proof you're a disciple. Now, now, if you're just stuck on yourself and it's all about you and, and, and it's your life and you don't ever, you're never doing anything for anybody and it's just what you can do and what's happening for you, and, uh, then, then you might have an issue to deal with. So he says here again, this is how everybody's going to know. All men are going to know you're my disciples. And, and really what makes a great church is that, that you have love one for another. If you love one another, he says, if you keep on showing love among yourself. So something that you don't just do one time. Actually, Paul teaches that we're to excel in our love. I mean, we're to abound in a lot of things, but, but one of the things he says, you keep on abounding in love. In other words, you're doing it real good. He says, keep on excelling. In other words, you, you, it, man, you, you are just off the chain. Man, you just, you went out of the box. You went over the top with that. But guess what? You just keep on excelling in this thing called love, all right? So Jesus was saying, love is the main thing on which we really should concentrate. It should be one of the things that we're constantly keeping in front of us. So I thought, hey, might as well teach on it. It's Valentine's Day. Let's talk about love. Let me give you another one. Go over to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Are you believing with me this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. We already prayed enough and worshiped. I didn't stop to pray. I just thought, let's just get into the word right here. So, but you're releasing your faith with me, right? Uh, utterance is greatly affected by the hearer. So come on, hook up with me and let's get, let's get revelation this morning. I believe this is not only just a greater year for a lot of things, but a greater year for greater revelation in your life. Everybody say, greater revelation. Who wouldn't want to be in a place where there's just love going on like crazy? Amen. Amen. Motives. Paul said the goal of our instruction is love. You know, I, honestly, uh, I do my best. I, try, I, I never try to preach something with, uh, with a purpose to try to go after somebody or to correct somebody. But Paul said the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. And really, you can take that two ways. Not only is our motive and what we're preaching on uh, is coming from a motive of love to help people, but also the fact that the goal when we get to the end is we should be raising up a people that are full of love. Goal of our instruction is what? Love. Whatever we're teaching on, it should really fall back and revolve around love and, and that it's making us, it ties into the fact that we're following God because we love God and we're loving other people because we love God. And our love towards other people is really a demonstration of our love for God. And how we treat people. So y'all don't mind if we talk about how we're treating one another, do you? Hallelujah. All right. So Romans chapter 13, verse 8 says, Oh, man, anything but to what? All right. So look at your neighbor and say, All right, that's all I owe. <laughs> it's just to love one another. For he that loves another has, now notice this, what Jesus said, has fulfilled the law. So we see one place he said, a new commandment I've given you. And now he says here in Romans 8, he says, by, this, this, by, by just walking in love, you fulfill the whole law. Think about that now. Anybody want to walk and fulfill the law? Well, what law? The law of love. That's what he's talking about. A new commandment I give you. A new law, really. And law means rule. So if you'll just live by the rule of God, which is the rule of love, and which is what? Do unto others, the golden rule, as you'd have them do unto you. And if you live that as your standard, you make that your goal. And again, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. But if you pursue that, how I many know life is going to be good for you? All right, so he says love, if you, if you walk in love, you fulfill the law. That also, let me just, let me flip-flop that. That also means that when you're walking in love, if somebody does you wrong or maybe they didn't treat you right, you don't get offended. What do you do? You stay in love. Because what what's the natural tendency? To, to get mad, get upset, right? Or to get offended. So this kind of goes both ways. That's why, listen, Jude 20, let me just go ahead and throw this one out there. Great verse. Jude 20 says, Beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in the love of God. Whose responsibility is it to keep yourself in the love of God? So prayer becomes a big uh, key there. You praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourself in the love of God. That means the love of God is somewhere you're supposed to constantly stay, all right? Again, he says, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. He that loves another has fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, now notice, it's briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Did you see that? So listen, he just says, if you decide to walk in love, you won't even break any of the other Ten Commandments. Because he goes on to say this. He says, notice, love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, how powerful is that? So every decision that we make, you know, sometimes we, and again, 
uh, we miss it, but every, a, a good rule of thumb, a good way to live life is right before you do it, you know, or just stop and say, is this going to help my brother? Is this, gonna, is this love? Is this what Jesus would do? Love works no ill. It's not, what would love do? That's always a good way to, what would love do? And situation arises, what would love do? How would love react? How would love respond? All right, now go over, you're right there in, in uh, Romans, going over to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Y'all are quiet this morning. Come on, well, lighten up. This is Valentine's Day. Look at your neighbor and smile and say, we're talking about love. Hallelujah. My wife gave me a, a, she gave me some cookies yesterday for Valentine's. I said, ooh, she knows how, she knows how to love me. That's my kryptonite, cookies. Anybody, know, anybody like me? Cookies. Woo. And then she made, she gave, she gave me some of those. And then she made chocolate chip cookies last night. I said, oh, man, you're killing me. <laughs> no, she's, she's good. Anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now watch this, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 12. How many of you know what 1 Corinthians 12 is all about? It's a good chapter to read because Paul begins chapter 12, verse 1, with, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. Look at your neighbor and say, we're concerned about your ignorance. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant. What are we not supposed to be ignorant about? Well, spiritual things, gifts. Well, actually, the Greek literally means things pertaining to and of the Holy Spirit. I mean, love is very spiritual. It's very powerful. That's why Jesus said, man, love is how, how, how strong this is. We already see some things. That, and so he, he skips over into this 31st verse, and notice what he says, earnestly, this is the Amplified again, earnestly desire... After he's been talking about all these gifts of the Spirit, he talks about ministry gifts, uh, gifts and how they, op, you know, what happens in, in the minute, you know, different ways, the gifts that flow through the body of Christ, and how we're different members. And then he gets over here to the 31st verse, Amplified says, but earnestly desire, zealously cultivate the greatest and the best gifts and graces, the higher gifts and the choicest graces, and yet I will show you a still more excellent way. Everybody say a more excellent way. Listen to me. Love is excellent. You want to walk in excellence? Walk in love. A more excellent way, one that is better by far, and I notice, the highest of them all. In other words, you want to you know what the highest road in the land is? It's the love road. This is the highest thing. But then now watch this. If you, uh, now, how many know the Bible wasn't written chapter and verse? It's like a letter. So, but men put that in there, chapter verse, to break things up, and so we know he's fixing to go into love and give us a love but, but notice, go over to the 14th chapter, the first verse, and notice what he says in the 14th chapter, the first verse. So he says, this is again the Amplified again, eagerly pursue, everybody say pursue, pursue and seek to acquire what? Love. Because he just recently, he was just previously talking about love. He started with the highest thing. He's talking about gifts, and then he talks about love, the highest thing, seek these things. And then he says, earnestly pursue and seek to acquire this love. And he says, make it your aim, make it your greatest quest. Notice what he says here. Your, everybody say, my greatest quest. In life, what should be your greatest quest? There it is. Well, pastor, I just don't know. What, what's the will of God for my life? There it is, right there. Make love your quest. Because why? When you do that, you're going to be just like Jesus. You're going to look just like God because God is love. And he wants us to look just like him. And he wants us to do what love would do. And to say what love would say. And to, uh, and to just really demonstrate the love of God. So he says here, make this your highest quest. Now, what I want you to see here, right in the middle of these two verses, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, right in the middle we have what we call the love chapter. So here's what we want to see. If we're going to, I want us to just take a look and remind ourselves about a little bit of what love looks like. Because how I many know we can talk about love till the cows come home? But it doesn't help us if we don't learn to apply it. What it looks like. No, what, what exactly how love responds? How does love act? What does it do? All right, so 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. This is New American Standard. It says, if I, now notice this. He says, if I speak with the tongues of men. Now, he just got through talking about gifts. So he says, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but don't have love, I'm just become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. How many of you know tongues is scriptural? He says, if I speak with the tongues of men 
and the tongues of angels. You know, sometimes praying in the Holy Ghost, I mean, no, angels know that language. Says, I mean, we're speaking unto God. Paul says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries unto God in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. Um, in the second verse, and then the fourth verse, he says, if you're speaking in tongues, you're building yourself up. But, and, and those are things that we teach and we believe here, not ashamed of it. Everybody should be praying in tongues. You should have a, a prayer language. That doesn't mean you're going to exercise the ministry gift of tongues. That's where people get thrown. Because if Paul says, well, not everybody speaks in tongues. Not, yeah, be, he's talking about the ministry gift of tongues. But everybody being filled with the Holy Spirit, the evidence of being filled is you having a prayer language. You can talk to God. You can edify yourself, build, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. That's what praying in the Holy Spirit means, praying in other tongues. But if you pray, just because you can pray in other tongues, and the tongues of men, the tongue of angels, but if you don't have love, if you're not demonstrating love, you just, you're, just a, you're just noise. Everybody say, you're just noise. You're just like a, how, how many know a clanging cymbal gets irritating? Has your kid, have you ever had any kids and they were just making some noise? And you say, you need to stop that right now. Right? You might know what I'm talking about? They're just making some noise. Noise, or maybe, maybe your neighbor, maybe their dog, your neighbor's dog is making noise and you want Anyway, well, it, it, that's just annoying. It's irritating and it's really not a blessing. And that's really what he's talking about. He goes on to say, Verse 2, and if, if I have the gift of prophecy, and I know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but don't have love, I'm nothing. So without love, what do you end up being? Zero. All right? Verse 3, and if I give all my possessions. Now watch this. I mean, you got, you got lots of people. You got these fancy, do, you know, popular movie stars, different people, and they, you know, give a bunch of money away and get noticed and different things. He says, but if I give all my possessions to feed the poor and if I deliver my body to be burned but don't have love, it profits me nothing. So in other words, if love is not the motive, it really doesn't profit anything. I can go out and give my life to be burned, but, but as, if, if it's not in love, it doesn't profit anything. So, you know, we, we can sacrifice and, uh, and do it without love. We can, we can give uh, but without the proper motive, again, it doesn't profit us anything. It doesn't amount to anything. It's just, it's just zero. And so um, he goes on to say, now watch this. He says, verse 4, here's, here's what love looks like. This is probably, this is the greatest and something that every, if, if love should be our quest, this is something we should probably look at on a regular basis, but we, because we think we know it, or just because we can quote it, doesn't mean we're doing it. It has to be fresh to us. It has to be alive to us. So he says, love is what? Patient. Notice, love is what? Kind. Y'all aren't too super spiritual to read this, right? Okay, we, we, I know that, but that's a love chapter. How I many know oh, you get to do it, too? <laughs> everybody, gets to, everybody gets to put this into practice because uh, your Christian walk begins at home. And don't tell me this is not spiritual, because if you've never heard my testimony, one time when Ma, Don and I were going to Rama, and I'll just be real honest with you, we must have been in a little argument, we were in a tiff about something, and I was mad at it. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> Act like you've never been there before. I was mad at her. And, and we, went to winter, we went to camp meeting. We were at Raymond. Moved, it's, I think it was probably, it might have been our first year or whatever. And so, you know, had to drop off all the kids. You got three kids. You go on, you're going to this meeting. And, and Brother Hay is talking about love that night. And I was mad. He's talking about love. And, man, I just, I, the more he talked about love, the, the steam was getting hotter. Because I, 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 do, I do not want to forgive her. <laughs> you may know what I'm talking about. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but I was getting, the more he's talking about love, and I remember leaving the meeting mad. And all he did was talk about love. I left mad. Man, couldn't he talk about faith or something? You know, give us Holy Spirit. Talking about love. Because why? Everybody needs to walk in love. Everybody has to wants to receive it, everybody needs to give it, amen, and so anyway, I, I got my, long story short, I did repent, I had to repent, say, all right, Lord, I forgive, I'm, you know, I had to forgive, and, and, and it probably wasn't anything she did, it's probably me, I don't even know, she's, she's perfect, amen, <laughs> and, uh, but it says, love is patient, love is kind, it's not jealous, love does not brag, it's not arrogant, it does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own. Think about it. It's not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. Think about that. 
Think, let's keep going here. What is it? Verse 6, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Think about that one. If you want to live a, a successful life, uh, make love your goal. Love never fails. So there's a lot of, uh, we see a lot of things about love here. And notice, skip down to verse 13. Notice what it says. But now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Now, now faith is important. I mean, without faith, you can't please God. Hope, we, need, we all need hope because God is our hope, and hope is an expectation. But he says here, the greatest of these, of all these things, the greatest is love. Amen. Let me give you the amplified of that verse. And so faith, hope, love, abide faith, conviction, belief, respecting man's relation to God and divine things, hope, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, true affection for God and man growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So think about it. You know, he said, make it your, your aim, make it your greatest aim. You know, we strive to make money. We strive to build businesses. We strive to achieve great accomplishments. We want to excel in sports. We want to be popular, own buildings, you know, get this, get that. But all those things are temporary. All those things are temporary. Only love never comes to an end. So we have to make sure that we understand. And, and one act of love goes on and endures forever. We have to understand that. What goes on? Love never fails. Love endures. It goes on. And so one act goes on and on. We show love to others by, by meeting their needs, demonstrating it, practical as well as spiritual. So really, we should pursue, we should, we should pursue ways to show love, especially uh, in the little things. And that's why I want to really take the rest of this message just to talk about. Everybody say the little things. See, little things, uh, you know, in... Uh, in Song of Solomon, he mentioned that the, the little foxes spoil the vines. So it's important to pay attention. And we might not think love, uh, you know, is that big. It's actually demonstrated in the little things. Everybody say the little things. See, little things are often viewed as being insignificant. But in reality, they're very important. So you could, you could think about it like this. The little things are the spices of life. I always think about, you know, spices and uh, how many of you like to have a little salt and pepper? You know, a little salt on the eggs or, or whatever you're doing. You know, seasonings, different things like that. Well, we make a mistake if our only interest is in the main course. Big things or things that we like. In other words, the main course without the spice can just be bland. It, can be, it leaves it tasteless, un, unsatisfying. Have you ever had something you just thought, man, you were ready to eat it and it just really didn't have any good spice on it. Anybody know what I'm, maybe it was overcooked a little bit and you had to baptize it. Sometimes i got to baptize my stuff, you know, with some ketchup or some butter or something. It's like going to choke you if you don't eat, you know, if you don't <laughs> baptize it. You've got to get some moisture in it. Well, that's the way life is, you know. Without love, stuff, you, sometimes you've got to choke some stuff down. And so that's where I'm, really where I'm going with this. And so, uh, you know, without, without love, without that spice, life can just be real dull. And it doesn't, have the, it doesn't have the flavor that it should, you know. Let me give you an example. Let's, let's say this. I was just thinking about this. A guy, a guy may feel like he's showing love for his family by working three jobs, you know, bringing home plenty of money. But the problem is he's never home. But then he's, and he's tired when he gets there. He's doing a big thing, but he has no time for the little things, like talking, laughing with the family, playing with the kids, taking his wife out for dinner. And lady said, all right, you know, and so what happens at home, you know, it becomes, you know, life in front of the TV or whatever, and home, his home life becomes dull, unsatisfying, and let's just call it tasteless. You know what? The Bible says taste and see that the Lord is, so we're, we're tasting stuff in life. We, we want to experience it. We want to, we want to taste it. We want to, that's, that's part of that emotion and, and the flavor of life, all right? So let's just put it like this. If we were just kind of putting it all in a nutshell this morning, love is like the salt, all of life is tasteless without it. So everybody say, love is like the salt. So how we want it? We want to put a little love in everything. Uh, that, now I'm not saying you want to put salt on everything, you know. But I'm just saying, you want, you want love demonstrated in every area. Think about, let me, now let's talk about love. Let's just talk about some spices of love. We already mentioned love is patient, love is kind. Let's just touch on some of those things because I think about if love is like the spice, love, let's talk about some of the spices of love, how, how love how love can just be, you know, dab a little here, dab a little there, 
uh, or a lot of it. Everybody say a lot of it. Uh, Ephesians 4.32 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Now think about that right there in life. Let's, let's get down where the rubber meets the road. Uh, what is it going to take to, to, to just have some love and, and show love, especially just like in the home? That's what he said. Be completely humble. And that's part of what love is. Love is, love is humble. It's not arrogant or pride, prideful. But gentle. We'll talk about that. But notice what he says here. Be patient. The first thing that he mentions when he says love is love is what? Love is patient. Now, don't tell me you haven't had one of those times where you was trying to get on the loop or, or you was going somewhere and you needed to get there faster than grandma was driving in front of you. Sometimes I think we got too many grandmas on the road out here, and they're really not grandmas. I just call them grandmas, but I shouldn't say grandmas. I just say, y'all are slow pokes. You might know what I'm talking about. Because we're all ready to get somewhere. We're ready to go. We, you know, we got things to do, and then you get on, and you're like, oh, really, 15 miles an hour? I want to get there before Christmas. And so, so he says love is patient. So the first thing that we get to exercise love and grow in our love, and, and remember, love is a fruit of the Spirit. It's the DNA of God. That means so God puts some of his patience in you so you can exercise it. And really love is, you, you get to spice some things with love by being patient. So patience is responding in a positive way to a negative situation. Remember that about patience. It's responding to a, in a positive way to a negative situation, being patient. And we all need some patience, don't we? How many need some patience? That, that you can say it like this, that means you're slow to anger. I mean, that'll go a long way. Especially if you're, I mean, different personalities. Some people are a little quick to get a little angrier than other people. You want to get, I know, I, some of you like to give people the one-way sign. One way to Jesus. No, I'm just playing with you. But, but really, you're choosing patience and, and, and spicing love over in this direction is you're choosing to have a long fuse instead of a quick temper. All right? Patience is like taking a deep breath and not allowing the devil's tail to whip all over the place through you. Y'all didn't catch that one. Or maybe you're thinking about that one. I mean, know oh, the devil, if you let him use you, the devil, you ever seen one of those movies, you know, when the tail, you and I'm not referring to ladies or anything like that. Or men. But how many know, without patience, if you just get angry and all mad, man, that tail gets destructive. Godzilla is in the house. <laughs> We're talking about love and patience. <laughs> It's a choice, really, it becomes a choice to control your emotions, right? I mean, we have, a, we have a choice. And a lack of patience will turn your home into a war zone. Amen. Patience, remember this, promotes peace. That's what the Bible says, pursue peace. All right, let's talk about another one. Uh, you know, just, we're talking about just some spices, how love is demonstrated. The beauty of our marriage is, is really linked to the daily level of kindness that we express towards one another. Everybody say the beauty. Think about we want well, just the beauty of marriage. Is, how is it expressed? In our kindness towards one another. The Bible even refers to the Proverbs 31 woman is, is, is kindness is upon her tongue. And Proverbs talks about it's, it's the kindness that's desired in a man. So, so think about just being kind. and That's how we demonstrate love. That's how we have a great Valentine's Day. Every day. Because we're demonstrating love. You'll never learn to love until you learn to demonstrate kindness. Let's talk about another one. Humility. Humility is an attitude that knows how to bend gracefully. We were talking about being patient. Think about that. You know, when you think of, of giving and taking and, and the Bible says submitting one to another, that we're bending gracefully. You know, in marriages, couples can, can be stubborn and prideful and, and I'm right and you're wrong and, and I'm not moving. Humility is an attitude of flexibility and submission. That's, that's really what, when you're, when you're staying full of the Spirit, you're easy to get along with. You're keeping yourself in the love of God, and you bend gracefully, all right? You're flexible, and you're submissive, and, and, and you're willing to lay down for the good of the other what, what you think you have a right to claim. Just because you have a right, or you think it's your right, that, well, that's my right. Well, that's all right. You trust God, right? And so it's never about who's right. It's never about who's wrong. Humility is willing to give consideration to others 
others' preferences as a way of valuing people. I mean, people just want to be valued, don't they? Isn't that the truth? They just want to be valued or that they are valued. Let me give you a couple more verses. James chapter 3, verse 17 says, But the wisdom that, that is from above is first pure. So if we want wisdom, wisdom, the true wisdom, it comes from above. It's pure. Now notice, then it's peaceable. So we already know peace is important. Patience is important. Gentle, kind. But then notice, willing to yield. Did you know wisdom is willing to yield? I kind of like to say it like this. It's important, you know, in marriage or in relationships, it's good to know when to pick your battles. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay. I don't have to go over there too far on that one, right? Sometimes it's better off you just say, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, ain't no big deal. Right? I mean, there's some things here, if you think about it, it's not, it's not, it's not, worth, it. it's not worth the fuss. And so, he says, be willing to yield. Bendable, flexible. That's, that's, that's part of demonstrating love. And again, if you can make this work at home, then, then you know how to use it in the workplace. Sometimes, how many of you got to bend at work sometimes? Especially, listen, if you're dealing with people at work and not everybody's saved, or maybe most everybody's not saved, or of course, you know, Lubbock, we're in the Bible, but maybe you got people that are, you know, saved, or, you know, people that, I don't know how, your work environment. But again, you're still, even in the work, even in work, I deal with people, I'm, I'm dealing with, I mean, You've got to be flexible. I mean, I'm trying to get, you know, I'm dealing with Allstate, you know, 40 times. I'm trying to get something taken care of on a rental house and getting the roof fixed. And, 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 and they're not really trying to move too fast for you. You know, you know what I'm saying? And, and they tell you one thing, and then you've got to deal with something else. And then, and, or you're dealing with, I mean, I mean all this traffic stuff, I've had, to, I've had to call the state, the highway department, and you name it. And they, they, they need to get this, and they do something. I got, you've got to get out here and change this. And... And I mean, and, and, and sometimes I'm going to say, Lord, can I be unsaved for about five minutes? Please. Because people don't really know you're mad unless you raise your voice. And so, have you ever tried to be, be, be mean and firm? It's, it's, hard, it's hard to communicate, well, well, sister or brother, you know, this is just not acceptable. And, and you really need to, you know, and you're trying to be nice, but, but firm and let them know that you ain't taking this no more. That they need to do something. And so, but, but there's flexibility involved. And there's, there's really this last one that I'll give you. Uh, we're talking about spice. Is this helping anybody? Love is polite. Ooh. Everybody say polite. Now, boy, how many we could use some more politeness in the world? Because why? Everybody wants their stuff when they want it, and, 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 and you know, they're, but Amplified says it's not rude. You remember if you back up, love is not unmannerly or rude, or there's a lot of things we could break down just, you know, and in the past we've taught along some, some different things along these lines, but uh, in our series, you know, on, on the analysis of love, and, and I took a few of these things to remind us, but, but love, is, love is polite. I mean, if you think about it, uh, sometimes I'm surprised at the amount of rudeness I tell you, you just come on. You may just you run into some rude, rude, rude person, rude person, and you just look at him like, you, you, is your brother the devil? <laughs> I, I recognize you. Uh huh. I I know what family you're from. <laughs> Christians aren't supposed to be rude. We should be very polite. We should be opening the doors. We should be yielding. We should be flexible. We, I mean, I'm not saying we can't be firm and let people know, you know, certain things that you're dealing with and you got business stuff you got to take care of. But I guess, I guess the thing is uh, uh, you, you don't have to be heathen to get business stuff done. You just believe God for the favor and that he's working. As long as you stay right and you deal with people in love, you know what? God's going to take care of you. Everybody say favor. But, but just being, being polite. Christians shouldn't be rude. We should, that means we should smile at people. Amen. Let people know that we got the love of God in us. Just being nice. Being nice. Everybody say be nice. Finally, listen to what he says here. Romans 12, verse 9 and 10. Romans 12, verse 9, it says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Think about that. That means if you're going to Harvest Church, walk in love when you're out there in the community. 
If you're not, if you want to act like a heathen or act like a, uh, you know, be rude and crude and socially unacceptable, don't tell nobody, oh yeah, I go to Harvest Church. <laughs> Amen. We're talking about living right. That's part of this part of just walking in love. I'm playing with you. He says, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Now notice what he says here in verse 10. Be devoted to one another. How? In brotherly love and give preference to one another in honor. See, that's part of what love does. We're showing honor to one another. He says, in pref he said, notice again, be devoted to one another. Everybody say devoted to one another. You know what devoted is? The word devoted, uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, really, it literally means uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is a choice, it's a decision that you're making. To, if you're going to be devoted, it's because you're making a choice to be devoted. It's not just something that happens automatically. You've decided, you know, I'm devoted. Uh, look at your neighbor right now and say, I'm devoted to you. I mean, just like a husband and a wife, they're devoted to one another. But again, it's a choice to be, to be devoted. And uh, Bible uses that word in several places. But he says here, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And, and you do that by giving preference to one another. Just showing honor, giving preference, and uh, being a blessing. God tells you to do something, bless them, or whatever. You just, you just do that. Kind of like today. You know, we're showing honor to, we're showing, we're blessing somebody. We're blessing this couple, Marshall and and Betty, you know, and that, that's it. That's, that's, that's what brotherly love does. That's what, that's what Christians do. Especially when God says to do it, and he says, if you get in on it, well, you get blessed in the process. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. I mean, it'd be fun to, you know, so, and this is what happens. So every day can be exciting if we see ourselves as God's secret agents. That's the way you got to see it. You're like a secret agent, and you're loaded with spice, Love. And you just get to use it in different ways, all right? Everybody say secret agent. And so we're like, we're like God's secret agents. We're just, we're waiting in the shadows to sprinkle some salt on all the tasteless lives that we encounter. And if you do that, if you're sprinkling some love, you're sprinkling some of that salt, because we are the salt of the earth, right? We're the light of the world. And so as we're, we're looking for opportunities just to sprinkle a little love over here, sprinkle a little love over there, that's going to be attractive to people. They're going to eventually want what we, what we have or ask where we got it from. And you just tell them, you know what, it's just Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So it may be time to add some flavor to somebody's day. Always think about that. When we talk about our, our, our slogan here, our, our motto is color your world. Well, that's what we're talking about. Bringing some life to somebody's world. Number one, God will color your world. If you're living in a gray world, uh, you're in the right place. God will, God will bring life and light and color to your world, but then we take what he's done, what he wants to do through us, and then we go color our world. We go spice it up. Everybody say, spice it up. Spice it up. Amen. How many of you like a little hot sauce on your eggs? My wife, she does not have an omelet without hot sauce. She, she's like, where the hot sauce? <laughs> or you like, you know, you like a little taco sauce on your burrito. <laughs> Why? Because, you, you, you know, or how many of you like ketchup with your french fries? Well, those are things, those are different spices, different things. I know, you know, she put stuff on. So, so that's what we're talking about. Love, love is an effort. Let me just close with that. Love is an effort. Everybody say effort. It'll take effort. We can get real lazy, and that's why we're to pursue it. That's why he said, make it your quest, or make it our quest. Remember, love is generosity. You got to let it flow. It's being generous. And finally, love, I believe, think about it like this, is the atmosphere for revival. Listen, you, you show me a place that, man, it's just love. That's a place that's right, that the atmosphere for revival in people's lives being touched and blessed. And because even the gifts of the Spirit, he said, he said, if you want to flow in the gift of the Spirit, he said, follow after love. Chapter 14, verse 1. Meaning, meaning, if we'll pursue love, man, we'll just flow right in the gifts. God will give you a word for somebody. God will give you, you know, something and you just begin to lay hands on people. Why? Because you're, Jesus said, Paul said, <clears throat> it's the love of Christ. And that constrains us, controls us. Amen. Did you get something this morning? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word this morning. Lord, we thank you that your love, we, our, our prayer this morning is that your love, <clears throat> it has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5.5 5 says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So Lord, help us. It's our job to activate it, put it into practice. And Lord, just add some spice to different things, different people. Different situations, Lord, that just, it just, sometimes, some situations, it just needs the love of God. Maybe we haven't walked in love like we should. Lord, we just, Lord, we repent this morning. There may be some of us in here, and 
And we just think about how we've responded or how we've, how we've acted. And, and sometimes you just already know in your heart. Sometimes your heart will just already be a little grieved. Uh, you, you already know in there that you need to get some things worked out and get it straightened out. And uh, so what you do is you, should, you repent first. You say, Lord, forgive me. I haven't walked in love like I should. And so, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for, for not being the kind of people or demonstrating uh, the love of God like we should. And so, Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you for teaching us. Lord, let this sink into our heart, Lord, in these things, that love is patient and kind, and, and Lord, it's gentle, it's not arrogant or boastful or proud, and, and it endures, it bears up under all things. Love never fails. And so we thank you, Lord, help us to understand a little bit more about the power uh, of love and how it can flow through our life. And so show us give, us, give us opportunities to use it this week and coming up in this year, Lord, uh, that I believe that, that we'll, we'll be demonstrating the greatest amounts of love that we've ever demonstrated before. And we give you thanks. Hallelujah. Well, every head's bowed and every eye closed. If you're here this morning, I want to give an invitation for those that maybe have, have never experienced the love of God, received Him as your Lord and Savior. If you're here this morning, maybe you're visiting. We're so glad that you came. But if you're here and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we'd like for you to be able to, to make that happen this morning by just making Jesus your Lord. We want to give you that opportunity. I'm not going to ask you to come forward this morning, but, but if you're seated in your, in your chair there and you say, Pastor, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life, and I'd like to do that, would you lift up your hand real high? Anybody like that for the first time? Anybody? I just want to make sure. You've never done that before. One back in the back. God bless you, sir. Anyone else? Pastor, pray for me. I'm going to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I, I haven't been living for God like I should. I've slipped out of fellowship. I've, I've, I've kind of backslidden, and I'm like the prodigal son, and and, and, I, and I'm ready to come home. I need His forgiveness in my heart this morning. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Lift up your hand real high. Anybody like that this morning? God bless you, sir. I see that hand. Anyone else? See that hand right there. Anybody else? Pastor, would you pray for me? I need to get my heart right with Jesus. I need His forgiveness in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, Brother John, I'm going to ask you, that, that fellow back there in the back, if you'll, if you'll work with him there. And, and just, uh, we got some material for you. This brother right here, see right there? Everybody just uh, lift up your hand and we're going to re just repeat this after me. Say, Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to shed his blood for me, to die for me. And I receive it by faith. And now I thank you. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me of all my sin. You said in 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sin, you're faithful and just to cleanse me and to forgive me. So right now, Lord, I repent, I turn, and I choose to follow you. Now live big in me. Thank you for filling me with all your fullness. And I receive it right now by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, stand up just a minute. Let's praise the Lord a minute. Just thank Him a minute. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just stand up. Praise Him a minute. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to heaven. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on, just love on Him a minute. Thank you, Lord, for your love. The Bible says we love because He first loved us. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to just thank Him for loving you. The Bible says even when we were dead in our transgressions and our sins, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. <clears throat> so thank Him right now. Thank you for saving you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for loving us. And continuing to love, sometimes we're not always the most lovable. So Father, we thank you for loving us. You see something in us. And so Lord, we love because you first loved us. Amen. We forgive because you forgave us. Amen. And so we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Miss Denise has a few announcements before you're dismissed. Don't forget, we have Wednesday night services around here at 7 o'clock. They are great services. So I just want to remind you about that, Miss Denise. Amen. Well, one of the things Pastor Bracken said this morning is that love endures forever. That's the greatest gift we can give someone, the gift that goes on forever. Amen. Well, I do want to remind you men that this Thursday is the deadline to get in on the early bird price for the men's camp, man camp. So $80 deposit is due before Thursday. So go ahead and get signed up out there for that if you haven't already. And then also, don't forget about our New Beginnings blessing for Marshall and Betty in the foyer. Stop by, get some cookies, cupcakes, and 
give them a hug and write them a little note and put it in their jar on your way out this morning. You guys have a blessed week and a great Valentine's Day, and we'll see you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You are dismissed. It's a beautiful day.